up, y'all? Uh, so, so when I say hi, I, I can say hi, Jane. Hygiene is important. I wanted to kick this off with a dad joke. Thank you. Um, okay, that is me. Um, my name is Jean Grey. Uh, clearly, I am not that one. The other one. Uh, it is a great original joke that people really like to tell me all the time. I thoroughly enjoy it. One of my favorite things is sometimes getting on Twitter and saying, I've just heard that there is a comic book cartoon character from the X-Mans. <laughs> Please tell me more. <laughs> and many men jump at the opportunity. <laughs> um, so, you may know me for... I just wanted to say that I'm wearing this very giant blazer and I'm very comfortable. And I'm also wearing a, a fanny... Well, yeah, I'm wearing it because I was like, you're doing business today. Um, <laughs> But I'm also wearing this fanny pack, one, because it's great, and two, but why don't these have pockets? Pockets, y'all. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you guys about pockets today. Uh, <laughs> so you may know me from such things as rap, comedy, social medias. I'm not really sure. Um, I'm never really sure where people know me from, which is weird, uh, but it's also cool, but it's mostly confusing. Uh, and those are always my immediate guesses, and I might be wrong, and you might not know me at all. Um, so if you're not familiar with me, I wanted to give you some background on what qualifies me to talk about experience, about creativity, and business today. So um, we're going to do a little slide of all of the things that I do. This is kind of a short list, because we couldn't make it any longer, and uh, I didn't feel like using Comic Sans, so I'll be drawing on a lot of these things today. Um, lyricist, producer, composer, writer, storyteller, chef, editor, director, engineer, hairstylist, actor, singer, dancer, choreographer, also minister, but we'll get to that later. Um, so I started really young uh, as a dancer, which I thought was kind of going to be my career from about four to about 14, which sounds like a crazy thing to say, like that's a job to have as a child. Uh, and I was the youngest person to ever be in, a co in the second company at Alvin Ailey. Um, thanks. Uh, and the rest of this is just interpretive dance. So if we could get the fog machines. Um, <laughs> So after that, I started releasing music uh, in about 1996 independently. Uh, I was producing, I was DJing, I was engineering, probably starting about 1994. Uh, I went to LaGuardia, the Fame High School, uh, yeah, as a vocal major. And so a lot of my uh, experiences with a lot of musical theory. Uh, and then I dropped out in my senior year. Um, because I was too ahead in classes and they wanted me to go to summer school in order to finish. And I was like, no, thank you. I'm going to go get my engineering degree, which I did, and then briefly attended NYU as a music business major. Um, but I think about a month in, I was like, this makes no sense. I'm kind of in the music business. Let me just go live my life. Uh, so, as an independent artist musically, I've released 26 albums. Um, 20 of them were done from a very busy time period, from about 2014 to about 2018. Um, completely independently, including animated, scored, adult slash audiobook that I did with my husband. Uh, all the albums were self-produced, recorded, mixed, mastered, the whole deal, everything. I toured internationally for a couple decades. Um, yeah, the, it would take a really long time to talk about all those things, so we'll get to the other things. How's everyone doing so far? Okay. So during that time, and also now, uh, I worked also as a freelance writer, a composer, a score things. I moved into the comedy and storytelling world over the past six and seven years. Um, I've had my own live self-produced talk show, did a series of live plays, had a show at Alamo Draft House uh, called Doubled Over, which was essentially making a new movie for people to come see every two months. Um, if you ever get the chance to do that, don't do that. <laughs> uh, I started my own non-denominational church called Church of the Infinite You. Uh, which was a sort of motivational gathering for creatives and people who've kind of abandoned their creativity for life and adult reasons. 
Um, we had Gene and John, which is a great live show. We'll be doing it later. So these lists are really long, and uh, I'm not going to get to the other things. Currently, I'm moving on to my next phase, um, what I planned for this portion of my life, which is television and film writing, uh, book writing, a one-woman show at the Public Theater coming next year, and some comic book things, which are very cool and very exciting, but I absolutely can't talk about. As all of these things, and as someone, um, my parents uh, are jazz musicians. Uh, I know there was a talk on jazz. <laughs> I agree with some things. Um, but I was watching my, my mom raise two children, manage her own career, manage my dad's career, uh, and all of us being immigrants from South Africa, at the same time start our own record label, compose, release her own music, and this is in the 1980s, not a very uh, uh, common thing for women to be doing. Um, so, so I was taught at a very young age to not really pay any attention to anyone saying, you can't do these things, or these things aren't available to you, and these are the rules that you have to play within, and then you have to follow them. So that never really worked for me when I started to do my own things. Uh, and I always figured, and I always was treated like I was never going to be a part of the club, whatever that club might be, like not the boys' club, club soda, whatever the club was, it was just not going to be a thing. I always described it as um, kind of walking down the street and minding your own business and there's a nightclub across the street and the doorman yells from across the street, you can't come in. And I'm like, I was not even... <laughs> so now also as a woman and a woman of color, I'm not a stranger to feeling marginalized. Um, and this started very young, and especially coming from South Africa, where the levels of separation <laughs> reach the highest heights they possibly can, and the level of go inside your box and stay there, feelings of oppression, of being made to feel less than, and that the conditioning of that is a very important thing for the world to be able to do to you, to keep you inside of a category so that people feel safe. And that kind of didn't work for me. So all of these things, um, and including the history book, after all of these accomplishments, just likes to keep me in a place where somehow all of these skills and creativity and business just get erased. And I just exist as one of my favorite things to be called is female rapper. Sometimes shortened into the worst word, femsy. We could just do a whole talk on that. <laughs> and the level of frustration doing that is maddening. So I decided a great name for our chat today would be Navig Navigating Creative Creativity. See, even I can't read my handwriting. Navigating Creativity Outside of the Margins. That is me. It is, yes, uh, many layers to that because I write. That is me existing outside of the margins, drawing outside of the margins, and any time I ever wrote, people would get mad when I gave them my papers because they were like, why can't you just stay within the lines? And uh, so I, when I was coming up with the name, I was like, also a good name, color outside the lines. That is just a picture of my cat Littles. <laughs> Most of the rest of the slides are just Littles <laughs> because no rules. So it's taken a really long time, decades, for me to, to understand and to be okay with not being a part of something because the frustration of saying, why can't I be included in this when I don't not only just do this thing, but I also do this thing better than you. And I was like, oh, possibly that could be threatening. So it brought me to places as I grew in my understanding of how I worked and how I operated, bless you, that if I wasn't going to be included, then what did the rules matter? And why did I even adhere to any notions of how I should do things or the type of creativity I could release or the timeline in which I did them? And there was a very a uh, strict rule in the music business that new music came out every Tuesday, and that's just a thing that record labels did. It came out at a certain time, and 
there was no one else to go to, and you knew that that's when things came out, and you would have to be so competitive, because you're like, well, if we're all releasing these things on the same day, these other things are going to get completely buried by all these companies that have money. And what happened when technology started to advance and we were all afforded places like Bandcamp and SoundCloud, people were like, well, it doesn't matter. And then everyone looked at us like we were crazy. And I was like, you know what a great time to release music is? How about Friday, 3 a.m.? <laughs> Friday, 3 a.m., people just got paid. They're drunk. <laughs> and they're probably going to spend money <laughs> being like, let me hear some jams on the way home or on the weekend. So it was going through all these things and being like, listen, I'm not going to fit in this club. I'm not on these major labels. What does it really matter? Why can't I just play with it the way I want to play with it? So none of it had to apply to me. No limits existed so I could grow and evolve and do whatever the fuck it is I wanted to do. Of course, barring that it's not hurting someone. And I'm aware of what kind of content I release to the world. So that my responsibility is to me, right? Deciding exactly how you're going to release things. What is it? What is going to be your creative narrative? My responsibility, I chose for it to be my passion for creating anything. I owe it to my spirit. I owe it to forwarding our narrative as people of color, as immigrants, as marginalized people, to the narrative of the world as a whole moving forward that we're not here, and this is very important to me, to just be humanized or explain to anyone. That takes up a lot of my time, and I don't want to do it. I just want to jump forward and do the fucking weird shit. <laughs> so that idea that we're just all here to be great and jumping ahead to the next steps because we're taking too long to explain things. So my message that I'm kind of going to freestyle here with some points is that the idea of creativity and of imagination is that you're here seeking things at your own pace and doing things at your own pace and your own original ideas. And I absolutely believe that there are original ideas and new things to come, even though people say there's not, and that's it. And there's no new original ideas coming. But the fact that we're all original ideas in the sense that we just exist, all of us in here, there's not another you, there won't be another you, and you shouldn't take that lightly. And kind of what we used to do in church is, can I hear you say, fuck yeah? Yeah. That feels great. Um, so I briefly was touching on the idea of, uh, you know, there, there always had to be some sort of explanation before my job. It could never even just in the rap world. It could never just be my job or what I do. It couldn't just be rapper. It couldn't just be MC. It had to be female MC. It had to be South African MC. It had to be somehow nerdcore MC. I don't know how they got that one. <laughs> I like some nerdy things. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing that today it would be Crazy Cat Lady <laughs> MC. But it always had to be something <laughs> before my job. And it could never get to the point where I was like, sure, I do that, but why don't we talk about the other thing that I've done for so much longer? Why can't we talk about the, the full realization of my narrative? We can't, I want, I want to sit down and talk about beats, I want to sit down and talk about production, but any time we ever did an interview, and it's changed a little bit now over the past few years, simply just because I was like, I have to be able to control this narrative, but we never got to talk about anything because it was always, but what about your vagina and how does that hinder you in making music? <laughs> so it always felt like this Russian nesting doll situation where they just make you smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until you're something they can hold in your hand. Has anyone in here kind of felt like that, like you're being subgenred and subgenred further and further until you just kind of lose the story of you? Thank you. 
it is, um, yeah, it's an, it's, it's an incredibly frustrating thing to deal with and to get over. And there was a point in time a couple of years ago where I had to learn that the idea was then just moving on, just moving on and doing my work, learning and picking and f which battles I was going to fight and when I was actually going to have that conversation. And if there was anyone that I encountered where I was just having that conversation up front, to walk away and go about my business because the rest of our work is so much more important than just sitting there and having to explain yourself. So jumping out of that and kind of jumping into this new world of writing and television and film and being so happy to like get called in for general meetings and pitch meetings and then a lot of times getting in the room and realizing that I'm in there because everybody's scrambling for diversity right now. And they're like, oh, who can we go get? You've got a lot of tattoos. You're black. Bring it. This is the perspective we need. And I would come in there and I would be pitching all these shows, and I immediately knew when I sat down, I'd be like, it's going to get weird. I'm offering you a lot of dark fantasy shows. There's a lot of puppets. <laughs> There's puppets in every single show I'm pitching. <laughs> and they were like, that's good. When does the rap start? <laughs> and in these rooms, the conversation would last many back and forths till they understood that there was no rap included. It was just puppets. <laughs> and it was dark. And they did not want to talk to me again. Until I finally started getting into meetings and met some people who were like, do you understand what I want to do here? I want to jump forward. I just want to be all of me because it's important. It's important that we get to do all this fantasy. That those things don't exist. It's important that we get to tell all of these other stories. Like, you get it. I've told the first story before. Let me do something else. And I think that's kind of what I want to bring here today is the idea of being like, how important is it for all of us to be like, what's my story? And how many people in the world are missing that and would be able to relate to it? And the idea that the power structure is set up so much that they don't want you to tell it because it keeps us at a certain point of not evolving and not growing forward. And it's gonna be frustrating and it's gonna suck, but you gotta go through it. The power of stalling the narrative right now and kind of sitting at this place of, every time I see a new movie, I don't know how many things we can reboot. <laughs> or how many sequels of Jurassic Park we need. <laughs> Stop fucking making the dinosaurs. <laughs> the T-Rex is always gonna get out. Or the idea that I'm, you know, looking at posters for these things and I'm like, ah, oh, I get really disappointed when I see new things. I think I saw an ad for something that was like The Neighborhood and it was a, uh, a white couple moving into uh, gentrifying a neighborhood and then a uh, the black guy kind of standing on the other side, like, and the white guy being like, hello, nice to meet you. And I was like, in this year, of our savior and Lord Rihanna 2018. <laughs> what are we doing? There's so many different ways to tell this. I'd love to talk about gentrification. Can we talk about it in a different way? Can we make it weirder? Can we make it fun? But the idea that if all of these people are stalling us from being in these spaces, we absolutely can't and letting us doing things like this and having open conversations and open discourse so that it's not just, hey, we're inviting you here for a specific reason and we're like, oh no, you're totally getting something else. And that's the most beautiful thing about diversity and creativity and being open and having all of us being able to input our thoughts. So, I'm going to wrap up today, and yet, I don't know if anyone's coming tonight to Gene and John. 
I saved up. Um, You really like sleeping like that. <laughs> I saved up most of my, my keynote graphs and charts for Gene and John because I thought it was ridiculous. And uh, I was expected to use it here. And as you see, I really don't like doing things that I'm expected to do. Um, as children, we're, we're very much expected and very much pushed to use our imaginations all the time, to play with imaginations, to color in things, to imagine worlds, to be able to find that kind of escapism. And then something happens at some point in life where they're like, turn that shit off. Go be an adult. You owe everyone money. <laughs> this is it. Imagine making some money and then paying people. And that's all we get stuck doing. And I think a lot of us just get trapped, even as creatives, by the idea that our imagination or our, 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 our potential or our limits are something that they're not. There are no bounds. I love that you guys came here to talk and to learn and to share and to celebrate your creativity and your independence. But it should be bigger than this. So leaving here and going home, if there's anyone you know in your lives and you're like, man, that is a great story. You've had a great journey. Or anyone who was kind of feeling trapped or bound by their, little, their adult life and they've forgotten what they do or even if it's a stranger that you walk up to anywhere in the street, just ask them, what do you do? Like, what's your passion? And I guarantee you that you'll find someone who is a, a comedian or a baker or a seamstress or, a co or someone who's like, I stopped doing that because I had to live my life, I had to live my other life. And I just want everyone in here to realize that we do have a responsibility to that, to, our, to ourselves, and to remind everyone else that we all have to be doing this so that we never get to a place where the world is where we are right now again. That's all for me. Nightcap. <laughs>